In this example, I'm going to show how the Human Factors Risk Manager software is used to analyze a medical task, and it will also serve to illustrate how the process can be used to analyze medical device use errors. If we look at the screen, we can see that the overall goal is to administer a subcontaneous medication using the Graysby M16A syringe driver. You can see that in the preconditions box here, we've set out the requirements that are necessary to be in place before we actually start this task. So the correct model of syringe driver is in use. The driver has been thoroughly cleaned using alcohol wipes and is serviceable. And it's also the, the third requirement is that an appropriate amount of the correct drug is available. So let's look at the subtasks that are required to carry out this task. So there, first of all, we have to prepare the syringe driver. This, is, this and the next two subtasks are carried out by nurse number one. We have to prepare the patient, we have to prepare the insertion site. Uh, then we have to uh, insert the needle, start the infusion, fit the cover. We have to monitor the infusion pump for any problems. Then we have to prepare the patient for discharge or transfer. And then we have to carry out routine maintenance. So those various subtasks all have to be carried out in order for the overall objective of the task to be achieved, which is to administer the subcontaneous medication. In this case, the plan is quite complicated. So we do steps one to six in order. After step six, we do seven, which is monitor the infusion pump for problems at least every four hours. This is to see if there are any problems in using the infusion pump. If the patient is going to be moved or discharged with the device remaining connected or in situ, we do seven, which is to do with looking at the infusion pump for problems. And then finally, uh, we prepare the patient for discharge or transfer, that's subtask eight, and then carry out routine maintenance. So let's, uh, let's look at how these things are actually carried out in detail. So if we look at preparing the syringe driver, we can see that that involves setting the administration rate, preparing the drug, preparing the infusion set, and connecting the syringe to the syringe driver. And you can see the fact that there's a little cross here means that there's another level of detail here. And we can see that this involves calculating the rate and setting the rate on the driver. So we, we can break down the other subtask in a similar sort of way. But let's just focus on one of these subtasks for the moment. For this subtask, which is set the administration rate, if we look at the risks that might be involved, we can see that calculating the rate and setting the rate on the syringe driver are quite safety critical in that if we get the rate wrong, we make an incorrect calculation about the rate at which the drug is to be administered, or if we set the rate on the driver incorrectly, we could have a big problem. So what we now do is to think about what risks might be involved here. If we click here, we can see that in addition to the structure of the task in graphical format, we, see that we can see the same thing down here in, this, in the so-called data grid in text format. So calculating the rate, now th what type of activity is this? So if we click on the box labeled activity types, we can see that this should actually be a, a calculation. We can see calculation here is the activity type. So calculation has certain types of errors associated with it. If we look at what those errors could be, failure mode could be calculation performed incorrectly. So the error description in that case is that the rate is miscalculated the consequence of that is that the wrong amount of drug is given, and then what type of error risk control measures are available? Well, basically, later on at step seven, we might see that there is, in fact, a problem. And so this whole process enables us to identify a potential failure there. And if we wanted to, another way of analyzing this is to, is to add a box here, which looks at two different types of calculation failure. If I click on that box, and then right click here on uh, failure types, failure modes. You can see that here we have calculation omitted is one failure mode. 
So we could also have that the uh, calculation is performed incorrectly. So it's possible to have two different failure modes there. That information is recorded in the data grid there automatically. And we can see we can carry out our error description, a consequence type, we can look at the risk control measures that are in place and so on. So once we've completed the task analysis of the whole task and identified the failures, we can convert the whole thing into an instruction for use. If we go into here and, and say uh, create step-by-step -step procedure from the template, I'm going to add a sign-off column, I'm going to add some extra, I'm not going to add any extra rows at this stage, and you can see that the uh, software will then automatically create a procedure for carrying out this operation and it will also include in the uh, analysis any warnings that we've built into the analysis itself. So this is a very sort of structured procedure that's broken down in the same way as the original task analysis. So not only do we get a graphical analysis, but we also get a procedure generated automatically. And finally, if we want to make a record of our work, we can just create a report. If we could do this in, uh, let's say, in Word format, it's asking us how many, how many of these columns we want to show. And so then it, it will open the Word again, and we'll have a nice report which documents in detail all of our analysis. So we can see that the process not only supports the development of a very accurate analysis of what people do in using this particular device, it also alerts us to the types of failures that could occur in using the device. And this information can be used both to improve the procedure itself, and it can also be used as an input to uh, evaluating the device design and seeing what sort of improvements might be implemented in order to decrease the likelihood of use error when this type of device is used in practice.